just a perfect day. Feed animals in the zoo. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Deborah Cobell Live. Uh, great guests we have in studio today, Jennifer Clary. Jennifer, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I love learning about what you do and everything about you. Jennifer uh, is the founder and president of Baby Box Company. Um, she's going to tell us all about that. You are also a self-described serial entrepreneur. Um, and also a film director, and you've worked on some pretty incredible projects. We'll get into all that. But first, tell us a little bit about what is Baby Box, um, who does it serve, and why did you get into this? Yeah, so Baby Box Company was actually founded because I read an article in 2013 from the BBC called Why Finish Babies Sleep in Boxes. And in North America, you read a headline like that, and you immediately think this is going to be the most peculiar thing ever. But what I quickly discovered is that for the past 80 years, every expecting mother in Finland has been gifted a cardboard bassinet filled with child care supplies by the government. And it's been credited with actually reducing the infant mortality rate significantly in their country. So I kind of read this article and I thought, well, if cardboard boxes are inherently safe, shouldn't we all be distributing them as a child um, you know, injury prevention intervention? And um, I started looking into it, and I started selling baby boxes retail. So we were selling, you know, cardboard bassinets that kids could sleep in up to six months of age. They were lined with a firm mattress. They had a waterproof cover. They had sheets. And a lot of mothers in Santa Monica and San Francisco oh, yeah. were buying away because they're eco-friendly. So that's how we got started. Um, wow. And yeah, it was fun. It was really, really fun. It was a journey that I did with my best friend who had just become a mother. We had a, a blast starting the company. Unfortunately, um, it wasn't sufficient to sustain either of our interests because we could not see the correlation between selling high-end cardboard boxes to <laughs> affluent families and improving public health outcomes. Oh, please come see my <laughs> nursery. And then in come the ladies and there is a cardboard box. And they're like... <gasps> You know, <laughs> exactly. But well, they're until cuter. They learn what it's about. Right. They're cuter than you might think. And actually, um, we are one of the safest statistically um, sleep spaces on the market. So we're really proud of the product. But actually, that's not what we're about anymore. Right. Because I traveled to Finland and I spent time with Kilo, which is the Finnish social service that actually put their program together. And what became really clear to me very quickly in speaking with them is that every mother in their country is actually mandated to seek out prenatal care, so a physical checkup, and also receive face-to-face -face dissemination of vital education information. Well, what's interesting is we have that in our country, but for the most, most part, it's for people who can afford it. And That's those who right. cannot, forget it. So I know where you're going with this. There's massive inequity here. Yeah. And so in Finland, there's this equal starting ground where parents can go and in a safe environment from an expert, they can learn not just about safe sleep, but actually about breastfeeding support, local resources if you're trying to give up smoking or alcohol, baby bonding, brain development, fatherhood engagement, right? So they go into parenthood with this wow. ecosystem of support. I fell in love with that idea, right? So being from the United States, I came back, I talked to my investors, I was like, I really want to find an equitable resolution so that we can have the baby box program here in the U.S., but that we can have it right. Um, and so what we decided to do was to become an e-learning company, essentially. And we have a platform now called Baby Box University. And parents, they can go to babyboxco.com. And they log on. And essentially, there's education time to their children's development. I love that. Starting with even getting pregnant. That's right. right. So yeah. from conception, you know, parents, they can go on. They can take our prenatal education course. If they pass that course, then they're eligible to receive free prenatal vitamins, free prenatal support packages, other information about what you might need. And who sponsors that? I guess your investors, right? Um, well, not necessarily your investors. Actually, what our company does and what I do a lot as founder is I facilitate relationships between our company's platform and brands which are well aligned, right, to act as sponsors and also foundations and governments, actually. I have to ask, so how do you do that? Like, does it help to have social media platforms and you reach out that way? Or is it really like boots on the ground, you're making phone calls or all of the above? Um, we actually are very fortunate to have a lot of organic interest and partnership. And the reason being that, you know, let's say that you're a brand. There's a lot of different platforms where you can do one-off sampling. You can send, you know, a kit of diaper samples, right, to a mother, which may or may not reach her at the right time. Mm. The Baby Box platform is perfectly timed because we build a relationship with our consumer based on trust, right? So consumers know that right before they need a product or service, 
we're not going to endorse it for them, but we're going to say, here's some education, right? So if you're an insurance provider, if a parent finds out that they're pregnant, suddenly they're thinking about, oh my gosh, I don't have the right health insurance. That's I don't happened have the right to me. Car insurance. Exactly. I immediately got, well, not really insurance, I because I had insurance, but I got, um, uh, oh my God, I, I developed a trust so that I could, you know, if something happened to me that I would be able to pass it on to my kids. So you're right. Suddenly you go into that kind of thinking. Your you whole know? your whole life changes when you're expecting your child, you know? And so it's, a, it's an optimal opportunity. And we can tell, you know, a provider like, hey, we're never going to release our consumer data, but we have this audience mm. that is interested in learning organically about the service you provide. Let's say that you want to sponsor this education provided by a third-party expert on insurance education. We can do that, right? And it's a, it's a much more wholesome way for parents to take the information. If they like the provider who sponsored it, that's great. If they don't like it, we don't care because our bottom line is, have we made you feel more confident as a parent? Do we feel that the education you received makes you feel empowered? Do we feel that your child is safer for having learned about it? If you learned about baby proofing from us, could that potentially save a life? Absolutely. Our whole safe sleep program that was our staple from like the get-go is, is like, you know, here's how you put a child to sleep safely. Here is the science that backs that decision. If you want to use a baby box, that's awesome. If you don't, we don't care. Put your child to sleep safely in their bassinet or crib. The reality is that parenthood is the great equalizer. And whether you're affluent with access to a whole slew of products and services or impoverished with access to very, very little, it's the education that can mean the difference between life and death. I also love the baby box because it's, it, as you say, it's an equalizer. That's it right. automatically, you know, anyone can have access, if you will, to a box. And in this case, um, I don't know, I just, I just like how this is wrapped around the box. First of all, it's a simple idea, but it's, it's something that works. You know, I love that. And I know that they're, they're, it's not just a box, like from Box Brothers. I get it. But just the concept around it, you know, because what's happened, you know, with having babies this past so many decades, you know, everything is so, you know, wrapped around the perfect little bassinet and all the little juvenile um, baby stores and all the little accoutrements that you don't really need. What you need to know is how to care for that child and what's the safest. You're right. I mean, it's like it's just grassroots and I really love that. I remember when I had my first kid because I have three boys, I was overwhelmed because I was yeah. people giving me stuff at my shower. And I'm like, what do I do with that? They're like, oh, you'll be surprised. You really need it for. And as it turned out, I didn't need half the stuff that people gave me, you know, including little toys, you know, that yeah. were well, unnecessary. Well, you hear that a lot. And I mean, when I speak with parents, which I do frequently, I mean, what I always say is there's two things that are the most important to being a good parent. It's knowledge, right? It's having the right information. And it's your time. Yeah. I mean, the, the most valuable thing you can share with your children is time, is developing those memories and helping them to bond and, and develop their brains, right? Mm -hmm. So some of the partnerships that we do that I'm most excited about are things like Vroom, which is a Bezos Family Foundation mm -hmm. uh, relationship where, you know, we, we put on the exterior of our boxes or our products um, colors and shapes and tools that are, you know, scientifically backed to build your baby's brain development. And so these things that seem simple very enough. simple— but intelligent, and this is the stuff you need, and not the 20 little stuffed animals that you see lined up on a child's windowsill, I think. I think that's right. And I think that what's so beautiful about what our company does is that we have so many parents who, like you, came to us overwhelmed, and they said, you know, I, I just don't know if I can do this. But the reality is you are the best parent for your child. There is no substitute for that. I mean, if you love them, right, and you're willing to devote time and energy into their healthy development— You've already won the game. What countries do you reach? How many people um, yeah. tune into? So we have a significant audience. So right now we can uh, we have consumers who come to our website and get the education. Mm -hmm. We reach thirty percent of parents um, mm -hmm. in the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom. That's, that's big. <laughs> it's yeah, it's significant. We reach in the millions um, in terms of family households wow. every year. Um, which is really exciting for us because when you think about it as an equalizer, our biggest responsibility at this juncture is to scream from the rooftops, we exist. We are a free resource for families. Use us. You know, I mean, that is that is what we want. We want to educate. What about in other parts of the world? So we're excited about expanding internationally. Obviously, we're um, looking into some markets that could really benefit from our program. Um, and then in the short term, we also do outreach initiatives. So I think I was speaking with you yeah. slightly earlier, um, but one of our really exciting partnerships is with the UNFPA. Right. And we have some video on that, right? Yes. So, so why don't you set it up? Like, do you have that clip um, 
Kurt, thanks. Hon. So set it up. Like, what are we about to look at? Yeah. So like last year, for example, our company partnered with UNFPA. Um, it's a UN Foundation project. And we distributed 2,500 baby boxes. In Haiti. Right? In Haiti. And mm -hmm. Haiti obviously has some significant issues. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of women's women's and human rights issues to overcome. But, but our program specifically was targeted on the idea around if we can get more women into the clinics which have been set up to provide them with safe um, delivery mechanisms and also education, right, while they're in the prenatal stage, then we're going to see healthier child outcomes, right? Um, and so we weren't getting enough women into the clinics because it's a long and hard journey for a lot of these um, women oh. to make on their own uh, when they're expecting. Um, but we got 2,500 of them to come out because they wanted to get the baby box as an incentive. So we educated those women. We empowered them with the resources to care for their child, the physical resources that they just absolutely depended upon. Um, and then we track the outcomes, right, to ensure that our program actually had efficacy. I, I honestly think this is outstanding what you do. Can we go to that clip? Incredible. Hello. I'm Jennifer Clary, and I am the founder of the Baby Box Company. I came from Los Angeles, California. Bonjour tout le monde. Moi, je suis Jennifer Clary. Moi, c'est même même qui crée compagnie qui fait boîte sayo, on nous relie au Baby Box. Et moi, je suis dans Los Angeles, Californie, qui c'est aux États-Unis. Loin. First of all, I'd like to say how grateful I am for the opportunity to be here with you all today. I also want to tell you a little bit about the baby box tradition. It started in 1938 in Finland. I want to tell you a little bit about the baby box tradition. It started in 1938 in the Finnish government introduced the Baby Box Project because they had very high rates of infant mortality. And when they introduced the Baby Box, infant mortality declined. Today, Finland has one of the lowest infant mortality rates of anywhere in the world. The government of Finland, the country of Finland, decided to try the project of Baby Box. It's because they have noticed that the quality of the quality is very important couldn't necessarily speak directly to a lot of these women. Just being there, holding their hands. Um, I got to visit mothers with their newborns and some of the facilities that we work with and sponsor. Well, right here, you don't even need to speak when you look at them in the eyes. Oh, and it's amazing. They know the language you're speaking. When, yeah. When you show up and do what you did, they, they know. You know, it's incredible. I sometimes, I've traveled quite a bit, and um, I sometimes, you know, speak to people of different cultures, particularly impoverished cultures and I think gosh do they know how I live do they want to come live here and I, I sometimes almost feel badly about it you know I mean what you're doing is you're going and saying no I'm going to help these people I'm going to do something about this for these people however I can you know there is a real um there is a real emotional yeah. issue that does arise I think what you felt is very normal and natural and yeah. um actually I was so touched by it that when I came back to the United States I was working with the UNFPA on the ground to have a social entrepreneurship program for girls so I started doing these video Skypes with classrooms once a week. And unfortunately, um, as part of the current administration, a lot of the financial support for UNFPA on the ground and the peacekeeping mission in Haiti was rescinded. Um, and so they were no longer able to access the internet. So these are the kind of struggles is that like sometimes there are interventions that get put in place and then something will change and suddenly everyone will lose hope. So one of the first things that these girls would ask me on the ground is, why do you want to help me? Like, why? And they would be sort what of... What do you tell them? I, I said, you know, I genuinely, as a human being, I would love to see you empowered. I would love to see a generation of Haitian women who are not struggling at this level. Um, but the reality is that when you fail to do that, right, like I, I definitely took a significant personal hit uh, when that program got shut down because, you know, you develop a relationship, you remember their faces, you know what they're facing on a day-to-day -day basis. And the idea is what kind of a creative solution can you put forth to continually help them? And I think that's the challenge with a company like Baby Box Co. is how can you make the greatest positive impact? Who do you partner with? Who are some of your partners' products? I mean, you told me you told Yeah, so on the corporate side, we have some really great relationships. Um, we just partnered with um, uh, Ready, Set, Food, which is a preventative allergy company. So, like, these are things that, like, you know, they introduce things like shellfish and dairy very, very minimally at scientific levels um, into breast milk so that kids are actually um, getting introduced 
earlier and then not having allergic reactions. So like you'll see that the curated partners that we work with, you know, or um, we've done a great partnership with Unilever, right, where they had um, the Dove baby wash because they were trying to explain to parents that you actually can't use adult soaps on infant skin. The pH is off, right? right? So it's all of these things that help keep children safe. And we do offer the free goods, but we lead with the objective scientific education because that is the principle behind our mission, which is to keep children safe. You're a very interesting uh, case study. <laughs> I, I, have to, I have to say that because, you know, I, I love people like you because half of my friends are like you. You know, you went to Vassar and you studied drama. Yes. Um, and then after that, you developed, you had, you started a business, right? Well, I started a business because I was studying drama. Um, so I was at Vassar and, um, I was going into the city, which is about a 90 minute right. commute for auditions. Uh, and it was the worst thing ever because I was exposed to like, you know, these 4 a.m. calls and you would go in and you would think to yourself, oh my God, how am I going to support myself? Like, this is like a full-time job. Like just going into the city, you got half a day gone. Like who's going to hire me? So um, my partner and I, we started our first company while I was in college, and it was a media aggregation firm. Uh, and so we were doing commercial work and things that weren't necessarily awe-inspiring, but they were paying the bills. So I graduated Vassar in three years. So what did you do with the company? Um, well, we at the beginning, this is actually really funny. So at the beginning... We were doing things like Mazda commercials and like Dow Agro Sciences, and we would like go to Georgia and like film oil rigs, and it was. It was but that's a, just huge <laughs> because I think it's not easy to even get the business. That's what I mean. You've got to be like such a smart entrepreneur to figure that all out. Now I'm somebody who always has great ideas, but I'm thinking, but then how would I make it happen? So you know how to make that. Well, you're happen. making it happen, but I mean, I think. Yeah, no, that, I know, but the, the, you know, in business, that's it, pretty amazing. It is funny. I mean, I think that. In terms of entrepreneurship, yeah, I think that there's two types of DNA, right? I think there's like super early stage people who are like me, very high risk uh, tolerance, right? Who will just go and try something. And if they fail, they fail and they move on, right? Yeah, That's the one kind of DNA I see in entrepreneurs. The second one is second stage entrepreneurs, which is what I believe in, which is that I can grow a company to a really good spot for about three to five years on the outset. And then when it's really ready to scale very aggressively, I think you bring in somebody bring who, in your has, who has the business expertise. You went to business school, but still has that drive to build something that's going to sustain. Um, and I think that that's a partnership that doesn't really get talked a lot about when you are looking at um, very true. the LA tech scene. But there's no shame in sort of saying, actually, we all have different skill sets and talents. I believe Let's that just too. make it work. I believe that, too. <laughs> what I bring to the table is different than yours. And if you can work collaboratively, that's that's why you are where you are with that's Baby right. Box. That's right. So what else have you done? I mean, OK, look, you're a film director. <laughs> you, you, you do a lot of stuff. Um, the Silent Thief yes. was sold to HBO, right? Yes. It was screened at over 30 f festivals yeah. internationally. What's The Silent Thief? The Silent Thief was a psychological thriller. Um, it was about a young man who um, discovers his family, and he's sort of a drifter, and he starts taking on the identity of their youngest son and, um, <laughs> and sort of builds these bonds with the parents and the cool. sister. Um, yeah, and it all sort of devolves and comes tumbling down, and it's a commentary on family bonds and um, accepting yourself and all of these themes which are sort of prevalent in everything that I do, whether it's film or business. Um, but it was Home, a great experience. Film, business, it's all the same, right? It all like evolves into so yeah, much, don't you think? Kind of. I mean, I think brands are a story, right? They really are. And stories are complicated. So that's right. That's fantastic. The Potters. Um, no, wait a minute. Right, you, you're doing the Potters now, right? That's a uh, yeah. Well, that's actively um, being produced and directed. Um, well, that's, a, that's an animated musical, right? It's an animated Tell musical. Us about that. Yeah. So one of my hobbies since I was a little girl was I I like to write music, um, and I don't wow. write really cool music. I write more like Broadway musical, like I've been in love with Barbara Streisand my whole There's life. There's no, music. <laughs> that kind of a thing. Yeah. Like Is that what you do in the shower? You're like thinking of your next thing and you're like, you're just belting it out? Yeah, so kind of. I mean, yeah. yeah, kind of. Exactly. That's the actress in you. Yeah. Maybe it's the actress in me. I don't know, but I love writing music. I used to mm. be a competitive pianist when I was young and so I have the foundation for that. And um, and so when I ever am stressed out at work, what I find is that I turn to music as sort of an outlet. Oh, so that's neat. Yeah, so over the past, call it seven years, I, I wrote this musical score and I got some producers on board and now we're animating it. Um, mm. And it's it's neat. It's a lot of fun. It's a totally different side of my brain. But I like I said, I think that there's a lot of synergy between business and art. So. Chris Cutler, right? Just, Chris uh, Colfer, yeah. Colfer. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Chris Colfer just voiced. Right? Uh, Asher, yeah, the, the young male character. We just finished wow. recording him last week and he was... He was brilliant. I mean, so talented, but beyond that, just such a professional at such a young age. When is that coming out? 
So that'll probably be released in 2020. It's animation. It's slow. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's, it's got to be a little bit easier, though, now with, with all the digital stuff going on with I that, I think right? it is. Or I mean, I think it's... You know, it's still a lower budget animated yeah. film. It's in the you know low millions. It's not Pixar. You know, it's not hundred million plus. You know, budget. And so I think that when you're working with a smaller staff and you're trying to create a still um, a very high end product, you're you're dealing with time, right? That's the yeah. denominator. So I just think realistically, we're looking at eighteen to twenty four months. Also, um, up next, you're set to direct How to Cook Your Daughter. Yes. I am. That title just right there. Tell us a little bit about what that's about. So How to Cook Your Daughter is uh, a very, it's a very moving and uh, personal project for me because it's actually um, a biopic based on the life of my friend Jessica Hendra. So if you take it back a little bit, when I was doing Silent Thief, one of the actors in my um, production was named Kurt Fuller. And a lot of people know him as a character actor. He was in Psych, Wayne's World. Like, he's a funny guy. And so you look at him and you never think that there's anything um, necessarily wrong or deeper going on in his life. But actually, he loves this this woman, Jessica Hendren. They have two beautiful daughters together. And um, he was sort of her rock as she confronted her father in adulthood about the um, sexual abuse she sustained as a child. And her book, How to Cook Your Daughter, is something that every woman should read, actually, because it's an incredibly strong and powerful story about resilience and about um, coming to terms with your past and creating a stronger future for yourself out of it. I was at a book exchange, and that was going around how to cook your daughter. That's right. Um, yeah, it was really Jessica's gone. phenomenal. Actually, she should come on this show. Because yeah, I would love that. She's far I... more inspiring than I am. Yeah, I would love that. But I have to tell you, that was the book that everybody wanted. I think a couple of girls actually showed up with that book, too. That well, I mean, one. I think that whether we discuss it or not, I mean, I think it's come to the forefront in, in recent years. But uh, most, a majority of women suffer some kind of harassment or abuse in their life. I mean, that is just statistically the truth. I mean, certainly in business or in art, I mean, I think that we have a tendency to be around that more just because there's you know, a lot more it's men than everywhere. women. It's a lot at home. It's, it's endemic. It's not just physical yeah, either. It's, it's not. A, it's emotional. A it's lot of emotional abuse to just keep you down. And That's I've right. only recently just started to understand that. Uh, my dad did not do that. But I've, I, I've understood it just being around. Uh, but, I, but I had other things. Being around people um, who just naturally treat women or people of color, different ethnicities that way. And I'm... Um, that's why I like to travel the way I do. And I'm not talking four seasons travel either. I yeah. really like to be a, you know, a little more organic about it and just see how other people live. But it's amazing how globally um, that's well, the Well, Jessica's book, How to Cook Your Daughter, is about to be reissued mm-hmm. um, because of the surge of interest in her story. Yeah, that's right. and, and really, it is so empowering as a read. And as a director, I'm so humbled that she's selected I'd to work with me. I'd actually love to have her on. I really, She's really great. I'm going to actually tell her to because, you know, her story is remarkable. Yeah. From her mouth, it's much better than mine. But essentially, her father was one of the editors of the National Lampoon magazine in the 1970s. And um, the title of her book was actually taken from an essay he wrote called How to Cook Your Daughter, which sort of made all these sexual innuendos about oh. preparing your daughter for the dinner table. Um, and so it was about Jessica. And so she sort of reclaimed that title and made it this incredibly empowering movement for women's rights. And uh, hats off to her because it's an exceptional read and she's an exceptional woman. Oh, that's going to be an incredible project. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's going to be great. Yeah, I look forward to talking to her. So, you know, back to... Um, baby box. How do you even have time? You said you have sixty employees. Yeah, in the in the so US. Wait, you have one over here in the US. <laughs> yeah, so we have we have um, wow. we have physical locations or offices, I guess, in Los Angeles and Ontario, Canada, and then we have it in um, West Sussex, United Kingdom. So we're sort of split off. Um, and the way that we run it is that um, we've hired incredible people. Our teammates at the Baby Box Company. They're all committed to the mission deeply. They're all very talented and they're all hardworking. So there's not a lot of micromanaging going on. It's sort of like we set the mission and then as a team, we come together near and far to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Um, What's next, though? I mean, where do you see Baby Box going? You know, because I see it. And, and, you know, it'd be great to part. Didn't you also say that you're about to um, go over to Liberia as well? Yeah. So this year we're actually really excited to repartner with the UN Foundation um, in Liberia because obviously there's a lot of um, issues, even in major cities like Monrovia. Um, and we want to empower women and continue on with that tradition of giving back. That's very much a part of our ethos. Um, so we're excited about that. And then Baby Box, we're also exploring a number of different ways that we can continually enhance our parents and our users' experience, right? So whether it's creating additional courses about things like oral care, 
eye care, um, you know, anything that hasn't been really targeted, tire safety, right? Like, do you know when your car is safe to drive with your family? Like, these are all the sort of subjects that we feel if we can create a larger conversation and get that out there, it could save lives. So when people go online and they look up babyboxco.com, babyboxco.com, um, do you just have a menu for people to look at? Right? Yeah, and it's free. You know, it's totally free for everyone. It doesn't matter what kind of demographic you're from. I got to tell you, there's so much I wish I had known, you know, because I was worried about some stuff that didn't matter. Um, there were products out there when I was having my kids that I didn't quite believe in, but it was more like the mass production stuff, and I never really went for it. And now I just think there's so many more organic um, materials and organic products just organic everything out there to help. There is a lot of material out there, but you know, one of the things when we were exploring to build our platform out, there's a lot of noise. I mean, we did a research study. Like anything. Yeah. I mean, an average millennial parent will spend eight hours a week trying to find out information about how to best care for their, their little one. And they report feeling frustrated and uneducated. Well, because it's too much noise. That's right. Just like with my baby shower, I was inundated with stuff I didn't need or want, and I, I instinctively knew I didn't need it. I just didn't know why or how. Now I know why because I went through it. So you cut through the noise. We cut cut through the noise. noise. I mean, you're not going to come to our site and find information about, you know, your child's brain development next to a smoothie recipe that could be fun. Like that's not what we are. If you want that, go to Baby Center. I go to Babbel. We are experts talking to you about the things that can really save your child's life. That is what Baby Box Co. is about. And if you take that education, and we know that you do because we see the retention rates, then you're going to get free gifts that are value for the time that you've invested. That's what we do. It's very plain. It's very simple. There's no noise. If you're a busy millennial parent and you want the education and you want to be rewarded for that education, we're the best platform. I have to say something else for grandparents, too. That's right. You know, um, because that's important, too. A lot of people just really had no idea what they were doing. And now that their kids are having kids, I actually think it's valuable for grandparents. Oh, my gosh. Aunts, uncles and, and men hear that guys like this is like an easy thing to sort of just click on and just read about um it's easy to navigate read about it with your wife or girlfriend it's just um i think that you're right and i think right now our user rate um you know fathers are are probably about 10 percent of our user base right Mm -hmm. uh we want to see that number go up and then when it comes to organizations like arp we'd love to see them get involved because we know in the u.s there's a number of states where the grandparents are more frequently caring for the children, right? Like very, very true. That's very why I said true. that. Because yeah, a lot of people I know, you know, they're having their grandparents watch them because they, they don't want to put them in daycare. No, they can't afford to have somebody just come to the house all day and night. No, so it's grandparents who who are helping kids. Yeah, so. and so that's a big outreach uh, element for us in the years to come. We want to make sure that we're reaching these people with information that's accessible. And it's funny that you say that because even as, you know, mama baby box or whatever people call me, mama baby box, my mom laughs that it's like a miracle I survived because, you know, even though she was highly educated for her time, the best practice recommendations change every few years and you have to stay up with it. If you were around when I was having my little kids, the one thing that always threw me and I mean, always. I could not decipher a scream if you had a dirty bottom or if you were hungry, if you were pissed off. I just couldn't figure it out. So I would just hand the baby over to my husband. He was really good with babies. He just was naturally good with babies. And I would just hand him over and go, what do you think? Like every time. They always sounded the same to me. Isn't that weird? I mean, it's so, not that weird. I mean, I think it's it's a hard language to master. It's a hard <laughs> language to master. So please do something on that for the mom who just is looking at her baby going, but 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 the bottle didn't work, and you have a clean diaper. You know what I mean? Well, we do. You should come on down. So babyboxco.com will give you your answers. Yeah, so please do that. Please look her up. You've got all these cool projects going on in Hollywood. Baby Box, which I know is your heart. That's what you're really... Um, it's, it's very mission-driven. Yeah. Really mission-driven. I just really thank that, you know, I'm thankful that you came on. Of Reading course. Reading about you, you inspired me a lot. So no, happy been, to meet you. It's been a pleasure. Thank yeah. you. Anything else you want to add before we let you get off I'm good no I'm really excited and I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you yeah and I really want to interview um, your friend as well who I will let her know I'll put you guys in book. touch that'd be great yeah. anyway thank you everybody remember babybox.co no babyboxco.com I, I, I did it right the first time <laughs> you did it right babyboxco. the first time babyboxco.com we'll just cut that out so babyboxco.com thank you so much for being here and uh, thank you so much Jennifer and uh, we will see you next time on Deborah Cobot Live bye